Until Dawn is one of my favorite video games of the last generation. It's one of the few games that has stuck with me and genuinely lived in my head ever since my first playthrough. A horror game that has a great story, a memorable setting, and a perfect cast isn't an easy feat. You can't really say that about a lot of horror games, but I think Until Dawn is definitely one of those rare instances. A game where there's really not a single major element that's being propped up by the other elements around it. And for me, Until Dawn and Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1 are the golden standard of games in this subgenre. Whenever I play a new game where there's no combat and it's like an interactive movie where you choose the dialogue and you can get people killed, they're always being compared to Until Dawn for me. This game set the bar for me in my mind. And honestly, not to sound like I'm giving a backhanded compliment to Supermassive Games or anything like that, but it's also made me judge their following games a lot more harshly as well. Like, I played Man of Medan and I was really disappointed with it and Little Hope was a little Little better but I was disappointed with that game also and the quarry I thought the quarry was pretty good but for me it still didn't live up to Until Dawn it wasn't even close and I recently played and reviewed the casting of Frank Stone and I had a lot of fun with that game as well but still until Dawn is just on a whole other level. But anyways, like any other beloved game these days, Until Dawn just got a re-release developed by Ballistic Moon in place of Supermassive Games. In the marketing for this re-release, it's being said that the game is completely rebuilt from the ground up and has a lot of new features, like some new dialogue sprinkled throughout, a completely new soundtrack, new collectibles to find, and even all new explorable areas. However, I've noticed in most of the marketing for this re-release. They've steered away from referring to it either as a remake or a remaster. But the online gaming community has definitely steered in the direction of referring to this re-release as a remake. But later on in this video, I'm going to talk about whether or not it is a true remake or a remaster because I think that distinct difference is important, especially when it comes to the price point of this game. But anyways, the Until Dawn re-release has finally come out. It came out today and I've been playing it pretty much non-stop for hours, which means I have a lot of thoughts I want to share with you. So I'm going to jump into the review. I'm going to show you guys some raw gameplay, but before I do that, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, if you're new here. I talk about video games all the time on this channel. I do day one reviews just like this. I do other video game discussions as well. My next review will be for the Silent Hill 2 remake. I cannot wait for that game. My heart beats rapidly whenever I think of the reality that I'll be playing a brand new Silent Hill game in less than a week. Then after that, I'll be covering pretty much every major and mid-release as well. Like the new Starship Troopers game, The Quiet Place, The Road Ahead, The Retro Realms, Halloween, and Evil Dead games, just to name a few. But enough with the small talk, let's talk about the Until Dawn re-release. Stand back, Debbie Downer. Oh, boo! Show off. Hey, Mike! You've got something on your face. So first, I'm going to talk briefly about what exactly Until Dawn is, because I'm sure there's at least a handful of you here watching this that will be going into this re-release as a brand new player. And if that's you, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil any significant parts of the story. And all of the gameplay that you'll be seeing in this video is from the first few chapters of the game. But Until Dawn is an interactive horror game. The story follows a group of friends who are meeting up in a giant isolated house on a snowy mountain for their yearly get together. But the vibes are off this time around because last year when they got together, two of their best friends tragically died as the result of a prank gone wrong. So there's a lot of tension going on in this lovely group of friends. Some of them feel guilty, some feel bitter, and some are just trying to forget and move on with their lives. All the while, things have changed in their personal lives since the previous year as well. There's been a breakup, some blossoming new relationships, and a whole lot of intercouple drama. But anyway, once our whole cast of characters arrive at the cabin, it doesn't take long for this to turn into a horror story. Not only a horror story, but one of the funnest 
most memorable horror stories of the past decade in my completely honest opinion. And not just for video games, by the way. I, that includes movies and books as well. I absolutely love the narrative of Until Dawn. The horror has a lot of slasher elements to it. A person in a mask wielding a giant knife chasing around teenagers while creating a lot of torture and torment like John Kramer from Saw. But that's not all. The story also involves a hefty, hefty amount of creature feature, monster horror as well. You explore abandoned mines and asylum and the nearby woods while being hunted down by otherworldly monsters. And there's even an ever so slight sprinkling of paranormal horror mixed in as well, just for good measure. And one wouldn't be wrong to hear all that and assume that the game and the narrative could be cluttered and messy and uneven, but trust me, it is not. All of those elements blend together and complement each other in a near perfect way, not only when it comes to the tone and the pacing, but within the narrative as well. Everything in this game connects in such a satisfying, well thought out way that most horror stories could only dream of pulling off. But what's the gameplay like? This is a video game after all, so is it fun to play? Yes it is, but be warned, if you've never played a game in this genre before, this isn't your typical survival horror experience. You're not going to be finding bullets and health packs. You're not going to be shooting monsters and beating down ghouls with a crowbar. There's no combat at all and no true stealth mechanics either. This is an interactive horror game, so think of it as 50% movie told through cutscenes and 50% gameplay. But don't worry, the cutscenes aren't boring. You're not going to be sitting there bored out of your mind, slamming the controller into your face, waiting until you can actually play again. In those cutscenes, you choose the dialogue for pretty much all of the characters. You can decide what they say, how they act, whether they're friendly or an asshat. You decide what they do in life-threatening situations, if they run, if they try and fight, if they try to hide or be a hero. And that means you can also get them all killed by the way. There are several different points throughout the game where you can get anyone and everyone killed. So by the time the game ends and the credits roll, you could have everyone alive and breathing, or you could have everyone be dead and pretty much any variation in between. But when it comes to the actual gameplay in Until Dawn, you'll be mostly walking around, exploring locations, reading notes, finding totems, and just unraveling the mystery and all the lore of what's going on around you, but there's also a lot of quick time events that are implemented really well as well. So well in fact that it often gives the illusion that you're actually partaking in legit combat, and the game also has some of the best chase sequences I've ever experienced, where again, each individual quick time event feels important, and each time you fail one, your heart sinks a little bit, and you wonder if you just got your favorite character killed or not, especially on your first playthrough. And I've said this in a few of my other videos, but it's definitely worth mentioning again here. I love horror games, but I'm not the biggest fan of combat lists horror games where the gameplay is mostly just walking around and reading things, those are always a hard sell for me, and the ones I do try, I rarely finish. I usually end up tapping out because of just sheer boredom, but if any game is an exception to that rule for me, it's absolutely Until Dawn. Not only is the story so good, and the cast and characters phenomenal, but the actual locations you're exploring are some of my favorite places to explore in any horror game ever. Until Dawn is just so incredibly immersive that I often forget that I'm not really doing much in terms of actual hands-on gameplay. So much so that when I think of this game in my mind, I usually end up categorizing it with more traditional survival horror games and not really with other interactive movie style games. Sammy! What? You wanna help me get this fire going? Uh, well, I was just getting into the bath. Oh. Oh, do you need any help with that? Now let's talk about whether or not this re-release is a remake or a remaster, and what you should expect going into the game, especially if you already played the original game back in 2015. So let's talk about the difference between a remaster and a remake, because there is a distinct difference between the two, even though a lot of gaming journalists and game developers and game studios like to use those terms interchangeably, and sometimes just outright lie 
why. But generally speaking, a remaster is when you take an already existing game like Resident Evil 4 and you tweak some things about it. Kind of like what Capcom did with this Resident Evil 4 remaster for the PlayStation 4. Those tweaks usually include some minor things like upscaling the graphics, like turning a game that's 720p into 1080p or turning 1080p into 4K, along with some minor quality of life improvements like updated control schemes and maybe some checkpoint tweaking and some lighting effects. Some other great examples of remasters is the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection and the Devil May Cry HD collection. They're games that already exist, but they're being altered. They're being tweaked with for the better or theoretically for the better. But a remake is when you create a brand new game entirely from scratch, from the ground up, like the Resident Evil 4 remake and the Final Fantasy 7 remake. They're completely new games, completely different games, made from entirely new coding, with completely new resources and completely new people involved. Different directors, different voice actors, different mocap, different developers, some of which probably weren't even born when the original was made. But like I mentioned, in most of the marketing, they have mostly steered away from referring to this Until Dawn re-release as a remake or a remaster, but it's mostly being called a remake, especially by video game journalists and the online gaming community. But I actually don't agree with that sentiment at all. This re-release is definitely a remaster. More specifically, it's a deluxe remaster, and I'll get into why now. This Until Dawn re-release is clearly made up using mostly reused assets from the original game. If you look at some side-by-side -side comparisons, it's mostly the same mocap mostly the same facial animations, and mostly the same level design. It's clear that this game isn't completely 100% built from scratch like they're saying it is in a lot of the marketing for this game. But at the same time, this re-release has a lot more put into it, a lot more new things put into it, a lot more than your standard cash grab remaster. This isn't just upscaled graphics and modernized controls. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the graphics are completely redone from scratch. There's some new lines of dialogue, and a few sections of the game have been heavily altered, along with a brand new soundtrack and even a new epilogue to the game that wasn't in the original. So yes, this game does have some brand new elements to it, a lot of brand new elements to it in fact, but those brand new elements are placed on top of an already existing game that's been out for almost a decade at this point, making this re-release not a true remake, but instead a deluxe remaster. The two games that I can compare it to the most is the recently released Dead Rising Deluxe remaster where that game had entirely new graphics and voice acting, but was built upon the already existing foundation of the original game. And I'm also pretty sure that that game kind of coined the term Deluxe Remaster, which I think is perfect for these kinds of releases. These re-releases that are not true remakes built entirely from the ground up, but have more new assets than your standard remaster. And The Last of Us Part 1 as well, where that game also had a brand new coat of paint in terms of graphics and some tweaked enemies. AI, but again, it was built upon the original game. But unlike Capcom, Naughty Dog had the gall to call it a complete remake and charge us $70 as if it was a brand new game. But yeah, sorry if it sounded like I was ranting there, but I definitely call this Until Dawn re-release a deluxe remaster, not a remake. So if you played the original, don't expect an entirely fresh experience. Go into this knowing that you'll be playing the same game as as the original with some changes and a much prettier coat of paint. But now I'm gonna actually get into those differences in which ones work and which ones don't. 4.0 bitch, on a roll. Suck on that when you're trying to sleep your way into a job. Who needs grades when you've got all the natural advantages you can handle? Oh, please. You couldn't buy a moldy loaf of bread with your skanky ass. Are you serious? Do you think that's insulting? That bitch is on crack or something. 
So probably the biggest, most noticeable change to this deluxe remaster of Until Dawn is the visuals, of course. This game looks so much prettier than the original game, no questions asked. That's not to say the original game is ugly, by the way. I replay it pretty frequently, and it still holds up. It especially holds up in the gameplay segments, but I have noticed that with each passing year, the visuals and the cutscenes come across more and more dated, but here they look just beautiful again. Characters' faces and facial movements come across a lot more lifelike and believable. Some characters, specifically Sam, Ashley, Chris, and Josh, are incredibly faithful to how they looked in the original game. Seeing side-by-side -side comparisons is like finding an old family video on a VHS tape, then paying some professional to restore the footage in 4K Ultra HD with HDR, or like that scene in the 2002 Spider-Man movie where he keeps putting his glasses on and then taking them back off. But other characters have been altered ever so slightly, just a little bit, like Mike. They changed his hair a little bit. It's a tad bit longer and it's styled a little bit differently so he looks less like Nathan Drake and more like his own original character now. But other characters like Matt seem to have been changed the most. It's clearly the same character played by the same actor and made with the same motion capture but not only is his hair completely different but it looks like they altered his head and his face shape slightly as well which I'm not complaining by the way. I think he looks more like the actor here than he did in the original but He's definitely the character that got the most tweaking done visually, and Jess too, a little bit to a lesser extent, but again, it's not just character models that have had a visual improvement. The environments are equally as impressive. There's just a whole new level of detail here that makes this game just feel that much more real and alive and lived in. The snow when you're walking around on the mountain, the moonlight shining down, the clutter, and all the disgusting shit you find in the abandoned asylum. Not to mention how much more improved the more grotesque, full-on horror scenes are. When the blood starts spilling, when the characters start dying, it feels so much more real and visceral and violent and just way more disturbing than in the original release. This version of the game definitely showcases the human element a lot more, the subtleties and the acting and the performances. But when it comes to significant changes to things like the story and level design, there's some for sure, but not nearly as many as I'm sure most people were hoping for. Certainly not as many as I was hoping for, and that's kind of unfortunate. There's a few new lines of dialogue sprinkled through throughout the game, especially in the earlier parts. Nothing that drastically changes any of the scenes or significantly changes any character dynamics or anything like that, but just bonus lines of dialogue, little comments here and there that, let's be honest, you probably wouldn't even notice they are new unless you've played the original game at least two or three times. But there are a couple changes to the story that are more impactful. They're not huge changes in terms of how big they are technically speaking. It's not like there's a whole new chapter or a thousand new lines of dialogue or anything like that, but again, significant changes in a more subtle way. I won't spoil anything, but like I mentioned, there's a brand new epilogue, one that leaves the game a little more open-ended than what we got in the original. Also, one character in particular has the possibility of getting a whole new ending, one that's a lot happier than what we saw in the original, what was possible in the original. Just keep in mind though, this is what I experienced with my first playthrough. I'm sure some more changes will be revealed here and there the more that people play through this game. And if you've noticed something completely new or something completely different with the narrative that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments down below, but make sure you say spoilers beforehand so just others can be warned. But anyway, to be honest, I don't really mind that there aren't that many significant changes to the narrative because I love the original narrative so much and I'm glad that it's mostly preserved here. It would have really sucked if they just outright changed and took away some of the more iconic moments, but what I am disappointed with when it comes to this version of the game is the lack of any new meaningful level and exploration changes. I wasn't expecting there to be any new 
massive, huge additions. I wasn't expecting Josh's house to be completely redesigned. I wasn't expecting the asylum to be four times the size or anything like that. But one of the biggest talking points in the marketing for this game was all new environments to explore, but there really wasn't that much new. There were a few extra rooms with some totems here and there, a bonus hallway or an additional small path in the woods, stuff like that, but nothing that really felt worthwhile. I was really hoping there would have been something new to explore as either Jess or Matt. Both of those characters deserve to have a little more dedicated gameplay, and it's such a shame that we didn't get that here, especially since it's not only the most logical thing to have added to the game, but I imagine it would have been the easiest new additions to make without fundamentally changing the game, since at a certain point in the narrative, both of those characters are pretty much separate from everything else that's going on. I know those actors are probably expensive, and I'm sure the budget for this deluxe remaster wasn't crazy or anything, so again, I wasn't expecting any newly recorded lines of dialogue or any completely new mocap performances from them or anything, but I was hoping there'd be some newly designed locations to explore as one of those characters. Again, nothing huge, just, you know, a five minute walk through the mines here or a two minute chase sequence there. Just something to truly warrant touting new environments in all the marketing, but there wasn't, there was nothing like that. Another one of the biggest changes in this release is the implementation of an over the shoulder perspective, kind of like in the casting of Frank Stone. The original release of Until Dawn was entirely from a fixed angle perspective, but here, during most of the game, it swaps to an over the shoulder perspective, which I typically love over the shoulder horror games, but I gotta be honest with you guys, it's pretty awful here. The over the shoulder movement feels really clunky and slow, and the performance drops in a big bad way whenever it is over the shoulder. So much so, it made moving around and exploring kind of a chore, which really sucks because it had the potential to be really cool, and it was really cool exploring in the original game from a fixed camera angle perspective. This is especially the case in some of the earlier chapters when you're exploring with another character, like when Mike is walking with Jess or when Matt is walking with Emily, your companion is always right in front of you and they don't walk fast enough so you're just always stuck behind them and always running into them. It's just clear that they tried to implement a new movement mechanic into an environment that it just wasn't suited for. Hopefully they can patch it to be better though. Another huge change to the original game is that they completely redid the original soundtrack and the musical score. It's entirely new music here and again, I gotta be honest with you, it does not work for me. I think the soundtrack here is noticeably worse than in the original game, and it straight up makes some of the more climactic moments and some of the more memorable emotional moments in the game not nearly as impactful. And they got rid of the Oh Death song from the intro, that's just insane, and it does genuinely lessen the enjoyment of the game, noticeably, at least for me. They really should have given us the option to use the original music music if we wanted to. So many remakes and remasters give us that choice. It sucks that they don't. But the score and the soundtrack and the audio design throughout this game do leave a lot to be desired. It's not awful, mind you. There are moments that do sound great, but mainly because of this reason, I can't imagine I'll really want to play this version of the game again in the future over the original. Yes, the pretty visuals are better, and yes, the cinematics are better for the most part. And if you're going into this game as a brand new player, you'll probably love it and not see anything wrong with it, which is perfectly valid by the way, but for people who are diehard fans of the original, you'll probably notice that the tone and the vibe is just way, way, way off. But with all those negatives, again, gotta be honest, overall, I'm pretty disappointed with this release of Until Dawn. I wouldn't recommend playing this version of the game over the original to a new player. I think the original is a much better, much more solid experience. And I certainly wouldn't say that this game is worth $60. I think the value here caps at about 40. I would have been fine paying 40, but if you're a huge fan of Until Dawn and it's one of your favorite games ever, I don't think you'll necessarily hate 
this version of the game, there's enough about it that's different to warrant checking out for sure and to just experience something you love in a somewhat new way, but I am an optimist. I like to look on the bright side, but maybe if this version of the game sells well, we could get an Until Dawn sequel. That'd be pretty cool, right? Especially since, like I mentioned, there's a brand new epilogue that leaves things more open-ended, actually way more open-ended than what we got in the original. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the new Until Till Dawn remaster, remake, however you want to look it up, whatever you want to call it, whatever they're marketing it, that's my thoughts on the game. If you've played it, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know, do you like it more than the original release? Because there are some things about this release that are genuinely better than the original, like I said. But in my opinion, the cons do outweigh the pros when it comes to this release, and I do like the original game a lot more. And again, I can't imagine I'll really want to play this version of the game again. But anyway, consider subscribing if you have already and thank you for watching especially if you watched this far